Welcome to the Blast Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson. And you all already know if you have been listening, I believe that being blessed is a mindset. And this podcast is here to help you to become blessed that transcends a mere hashtag. Okay. Now, I, you know, I interview guests every week and these people I'm bringing on to you, they have already decided that they are blessed in their minds and they are coming to share their story with you or they're coming to share tips to help you to get to where we are, that we make a daily decision to be blessed. I'm broadcasting on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. And it is a nonprofit radio broadcast with the mission to empower, encourage, and educate. If you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, please go donate at www.wytv7.org. Now, if you're ready, we're ready. I have um, a fun guest today, and I say fun because it's a new person. I'm meeting her at the same time you all are. But she's Masara. She is a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So as far as I'm concerned, we're sisters. We're just now meeting for the first time. That's all. So um, my guest is Carmen Reed. Um, Carmen Reed Duckett. She's a certified mediation instructor, a certified Reiki um, practitioner, a certified Oracle card reading, and currently a natural holistic health doctoral student. She's been practicing meditation for 12 years and has been certified for five. Now, we know it's January. We started off getting fis fiscally fit. You know, we got to get that money right. Everybody be talking about I got to lose weight, but come on now, we need to lose some debt. That's what we need to do. All right. Then we went with Dr. Betsy and she was telling about how mindset can affect how we feel. And I always knew young that, but to have a doctor come and say, yeah, all that stress is causing diabetes. All that stress is messing with your high blood pressure. So we, we, we talked about money. We talked about mindset. And now we are going to talk about meditation. Can I help y'all? Meditation will help you with all of that thing. Everything you want to change in your life, meditation can help you with that. So Carmen, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Blessed Podcast. So happy to be here. <laughs> so let's just, let's jump right into it. I found you because I was looking for somebody who was actually a certified meditation specialist because meditation can be tricky for some people. Explain, because even for me, it was like, what am I doing? Am I supposed to, am I doing it right? My mind keep wondering. And I was thinking that I was horrible at meditation. I've learned some things, but I want you to, why is meditation so hard for people to conceive? That is an amazing question. Honestly, with meditation, you're kind of tricking your brain, right? Because throughout the day, you're constantly going, going, going. You're thinking about work. You're thinking about family. And that's just how our minds are trained. Even when we sleep, we're thinking. So with meditation, it's just like when you are exercising and you have that muscle memory. It's creating that muscle memory in the mind. So especially when you're first starting off, you can meditate and you can breathe. But the first thing your mind does when you are now calm and relaxed, it's going to start thinking about things. Yes. And the trick is to tell your mind that it is okay to relax. And honestly, that's one of the hugest deterrents for people. It's like, you know what? I don't think I'm doing this right. I'm breathing, I'm thinking, I'm sleeping, I'm doing everything <laughs> I'm not supposed to do. Um, but the key is really, it's, it's no, I personally don't think it's a right or wrong way. You know, with meditation, you just have to find your way. You can, you can meditate quietly. You can meditate while listening to music. It's not beating yourself up first and figuring out what works best for your mind and your body. That is so, so important to remember because there's more, way, more ways to, to meditate than just, um, um, and like, 
I'm not saying that nothing's wrong with that, but I'm like, but that just might not be what you need. You might need to like for me, oh man, put me on the ocean. Ooh, I can meditate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like it's the oh, and I mean I guess like ocean sounds will probably help too. And and then like, have you ever like listened to a person's voice and you're just like, oh man, I need them to speak to me so I can meditate because it was so calm and relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like that kind of thing but to know that we're not doing it wrong I think that's like really important for people to realize if they're gonna because I believe everybody needs to have a meditation practice yes they need to do it even if it's just for the first five minutes of their day yes. before they pick up the phone before they just sit there and okay what is your definition of meditation then? So my definition of meditation is really calming the body and clearing the mind. So even when you are just sitting in silence and you're just focusing on the breath, that is so powerful because I, what we fail to realize is the breath is the only thing that connects the mind and the body. So Mm -hmm. even if you don't think about anything, just think about the present moment and just breathing. And instantly you will find yourself being more calm and being more centered. It's it's one of the easiest things to do. And it's so natural to just breathe, but it's so hard for us to just be still, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the one thing all of us ask to do a lot. Like, oh, I need a vacation, I need a break. But you just have to be still and be in the moment. Yes, I love that. Be still. So because, you know, this is less and WYTV7 is a Christian um, network, but we are not at blessed. And I can't speak for the other broadcasters, but at blessed, we're not just about, oh, all Christian, you know, all Christian everything. And because, because what I found that you have a lot of Christian people at the church, they think when you talk, start talking about meditation, and now you're talking about some woo 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 stuff, right? Uh-huh. It's like, but the Bible says to be still and yeah. know. And I'm like, if that's not him telling you to meditate, yes. I mean, it's just like be still and know that I am God. And that's what I feel like with meditation. So I'm like, people that talk about they pray, but if you pray and you should be meditating because the meditation part, in my opinion, is your listening to God part. Exactly. So when it's I, all part of prayer. Yeah, because when I pray, that's when God hears me. But when I meditate, that's when I hear him. That's when wow. his spirit is resonating within me. That's when I can do some self-reflection and self-discovery and really kind of home into myself and ask myself, okay, Carmen, what are some triggers? What are some things that are causing stress into your life? And most importantly, you are in control. So Ooh. while I'm meditating and while I'm breathing, I'm really reevaluating myself and my approaches. Because at the end of the day, as you said before, stress is the trigger. So what can I do to alleviate that stress in my life so I don't cause myself to have high blood pressure, to have anxiety, to have a lot of these things? And yeah. it's, it's so important. Yeah. Oh my goodness. is Because now, of course, they're going to be like, well, prayer is us talking to God and him God with us. It's like, but most people, when they think of prayer, they only are thinking about what they are saying. Uh-huh. That's why I always say add meditation because meditation, you know, close your mouth. You're not talking, you're listening. And then, and the thing is, and what we're listening to is the God within. Uh-huh. Because, all right, I already know some of y'all, y'all know how I am. God is here inside, not up there in heaven. He's here inside. So, when we meditate, we're going in to hear from spirit. But we're, we're hearing from God inside of us, telling us how we should be moving, how we should be you know, operating. It's a really a personal type kind of thing. Cause you know, it's like, you can read the Bible but the Bible is general, it's for everybody. But it's our meditation and it's our meditation practice that allows a God to tell us what we need to do how we supposed to walk, how we supposed to act, how, and like, like you said, reevaluate, why, why did you even get triggered? Why did you allow that to, to upset you? What is it inside of you? What are the thoughts inside of you 
that connected with that that you thought that that was an attack on you exactly exactly oh and it and also it's all about application too right it's not the fact that you are dismissing what happened Mm -hmm. it's the fact that you are going into yourself internally like you know what i acknowledge that that happened i acknowledge that that was hurtful or that was pain but now i have the power to ask myself how can i change how i i think how can i change how i react how can i change the way i treat people because all of that holistically that that affects us you know internally yeah. and externally oh my goodness i was and this is about like this is a practice the meditation is a practice that i think like it solves so many things but like even in our community communicating with one another like you could say something to me and or if i say something to you and you get a look on your face like and it was totally opposite of what, and I, I supposed to look at you and like, okay, she didn't really get what I was saying, right? And then I'm supposed to make sure that you understood exactly what I meant, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But for the person who was listening, you, we have to, like, how, what filters is this information going through? You know, and then once I figure out, okay, this information is going through this filter from how my mama taught me to look at stuff. And then it's like, okay, my mama taught me, but that might not have been right when she taught me, or it doesn't serve me. Not that it's right or wrong. It may have been good for her, but it doesn't serve me. So I need to stop letting things filter through this thing that wasn't even for me. Exactly. (laughs) You know, it's so many filters. Yeah, rediscovering your truth, right? And you hit the nail right on the head. There are some things that, you know, I witnessed growing up that was perfect for my mother, you know, Mm -hmm. and my father at that time. Right. Now, with me being a wife and a mom, I'm asking myself, like, okay, how does this apply to my life, to my child, to my environment? And with meditation, it helps me to really listen better to appreciate, because it's all about honoring space, right? And it allows me to honor, you know, other spaces as well as mine. Like you have, you are entitled to your feelings, to thoughts, you are entitled to that. But with just being calm and centered, and when you listen openly, you know, listen to understand, not to be understood. Yes. And just breathe and take heed to what's going on. I've noticed just in my life that it has been applicable in everything, whether it's corporate, whether it's, you know, organizational wise or family wise. And I, I love it. You know what you said, you said it's like the just breathe. That is something that I realized that we don't really do. I mean, you know, we breathe because we got to, you know, live. So it's, it's a subconscious thing. We're breathing. We're not consciously breathing. But when we are conscious about our breath, then you realize how shallow your breathing is. Exactly. How you don't necessarily go, you know, get that big breath that you need that deep, you know, you know, we're not inhaling, we're not exhaling, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So when you teach meditation, do you teach the breathing? Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is the first thing that I teach. And then before every class, we go through breathing exercises because exactly like you said, we only recognize the breath, breath in different stressful or impacted situations. So you either have exercise or you have anxiety and you notice yourself just breathing fast or you may be very calm and relaxed and that's when you notice yourself breathing slow. And it's finding that middle, right? So even when you are just normal and in constant motion, just still focus on the breath. And in the classes, it's really allowing people to understand to breathe from the diaphragm. You don't have to breathe from the lungs and allow that breath and that energy to flow through the body because you will instantly feel the whole, your whole body relax and tension is relieved. And going back to what you were saying before, sometimes it only takes five minutes. That's really all you need. Mm-hmm. So if, all right, so for people that are listening, we have a little time and I'm just like, what, could you do like a, like a quick um, breathe, breathing technique type thing that you, 
that you think we should be doing on a daily basis? Of course. Um, I would say one of the, the easiest things to do with breathing, um, the basis is kind of envision, visualize your breath as a balloon. Mm -hmm. So when you breathe in, sometimes we, you know, breathe in from the chest, but when you breathe in, breathe in from the diaphragm and imagine your, your belly kind of expanding. Mm -hmm. And when you breathe out, just allow it to deflate. And then with breathing out, you are purging that breath. Mm -hmm. And when you breathe out, especially with that technique, you feel your entire body just slowly relaxing and unwinding and de-stressing. Mm -hmm. And do that a couple of times, maybe five or six times, and you will instantly feel that difference. And by breathing, it helps you connect in meditation quicker. Okay. So, so you said the breath helps us to connect with the meditation. So when we are, so like the guided meditation, because mm -hmm. I use those a lot because it seems like they help me a little bit yeah. more when I'm like focused because it gives me something to like focus on as opposed to just being quiet and still because my mind will go mm -hmm. when I do the guided meditations and I have straight with those and falling asleep <laughs> you say that's when you laugh it made me laugh when you said that but in the guided meditations are there like ones that are best that you suggest or what oh really good question so with guided meditation and meditation in general is over 23 different techniques okay but guided is the most popular one and one thing I always say is like try a couple ones for some people affirmation meditation is great if they're stressed mm -hmm. but if you're trying to relax guided meditation is also best because with guided it can take you on this beach and you can visualize the waves and you know hear the birds chirping and feel the wind you you really become a part of that that imagery and it allows for you to relax it you know you're bringing the sand you know to your own beach i guess right those right. are the best ones and but also with guided meditations um there are some ones where people are just talking and for a lot of people that just that's not good for them you know mm -hmm. it doesn't help you relax because now you're too busy thinking about what they're saying uh -huh. You know, um, but even if you cannot find a guided meditation that you feel that you're connected with, most times just listening to meditation music mm -hmm. and just flowing with the music, hearing the different sounds, hearing the waves, hearing the birds, you know, like really seeing what different elements in that music that you can listen to, you will find yourself become more and more relaxed because with that music, it is connected with different hurts in the brain okay. that, you know, with those, it yeah, allows yeah, yeah. your alpha, your delta, you know, your different brain waves to relax more. So, so that, cause I was looking at that. So those different brain waves. So what brain waves, what hurts are we should be looking at when we want to relax? So if you want to relax, sometimes the best one is about maybe 575 hertz. Mm -hmm. Um, with a lot of the guided meditations, especially if you pull it up on YouTube, it will have it in the title description. But with those, it will allow you to be more close to your REM brain waves, okay. where you're really able to go into a deep meditation and fall asleep if you want. <laughs> and it's okay. That's what we want to do because we wanted it to make us relax, and that's what it did, and that's what it did. <laughs> so that's a win when we. <laughs> Not all the time though. <laughs> Not all the time, but it's a win if you do it at night and for that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so what made you start meditating? Oh, great question. Um, honestly, when I was in college, I suffered with anxiety and stress really bad. And um, also my father passed away. So I started meditating because that was the only thing in my life where I found peace. Mm -hmm. Um things just became more clear. And I found that just like I have control over the breath, I had control over my life and I had control over how I react to things and how I deal with people. Mm -hmm. And I saw that shift, I saw that change. I was like, wow, if this can help me through this traumatic time, you know, 
I know this can help others because with my anxiety, I would suffer through really bad migraines where I was hospitalized. Oh, wow. And I did not want stress to take my life so young. And I saw just, it's kind of like a, a seed that you plant, right? One bad thing can happen, you plant that seed. And we manipulate our minds every day. So yeah. once I planted that seed, those manipulations was the water that I allowed for that seed to grow. Yeah. And it started to spiral and I had no control over my own life. And I didn't like that. Right. And then I haven't looked back. You know, that is so, oh my gosh. The, I don't even know where to start because it's like <laughs> so much to unpack in it because the, my, the stories that we tell ourselves, oh. And I'm here to tell you, yes, bad things happen to us. The thing, like you said earlier, let, let's go ahead and sit in that for a minute. That was horrible what that person did. It was horrible. Shame on them. Let's even take some time to cuss them out and everything. And let's do all that. Take the time. Okay, done. Now, how you feeling? You, you're stressed. You're angry. And everything's tight. There's nothing good coming from that. But you got it out because you needed to get it out. Now you got to move on. And the best way to move on is change the story. Exactly. Change the story. You're not changing the facts, but you're changing the story that you're telling yourself. So I'm going to use myself because y'all know I love to use myself as an example. Because, you know, just to show you, I'm just like everybody else. You know, um, my son's father left me to raise him alone. And now I could be a bitter woman to say, to have that story. My son's father left me to raise him alone. That could be my story, make me bitter and distrustful and all that. Or I can say that my son's father gave me the opportunity to raise him the way I wanted to raise him with the people and the village that God wanted him to be raised in and he became a perfect person. <laughs> well, a perfect individual based on the people that were around him. Cause yes. he beat my child and need that other person in life. So I'm gonna turn around and be like, you know what? The story is he gave me the opportunity to raise my son the way I wanted to raise him. Yeah. But also- and it's very believing. empowering. Yeah, it's very empowering, right? Yeah. And I'm so happy you said that because it's important. It's one thing to just say stuff, you know, but it's another thing to say it and believe it in a sense. Yes. yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. But as long, if we keep saying it enough, because it's just like all the other lies. Let me just, let me just help everybody because I, I know y'all gonna really come. I, please write me if y'all don't agree because I really want to hear what people think. Um, it's flu season. How many times we hear that lie and we believe it? Because honestly, I've never gotten the flu. So why I'm calling stuff the flu season? I've I, I never had the flu. But I, I, I'm going to call this part time a certain time of the year the flu season because everybody else said that that's what it was. But we keep saying it, we keep saying it, we keep saying it, we keep believing it, we keep believing it. Like we say stuff <laughs> and we don't believe it, but we keep saying it anyway. And then we be, start believing. Yep. So of course, a lot of people gonna get the flu. You know why? Because a lot of people have believed that this is the time when you're supposed to get the flu. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and some people are like, well, that's the truth though. But is it? Or is it that's just because everybody collectively have put that into consciousness and that's what everybody gets. It's just like, you know, when we get a group of black women and we want to say, men are dogs, black men don't appreciate it. Is it the truth? Mm. Or is it just the, the collective consciousness that we are all agreeing to? Yeah. And then, so it's like, what if we just decided that we weren't going to believe certain things no more? And some people are like, well, that ain't gonna stop it from happening, but it may stop it happening for you. <laughs> and then once enough, it stopped happening for enough people, guess what? 
Right. Then other people going to start saying that and then they're going to be like, well, that must be the norm. And then everybody mm -hmm. else will start believing the way we believe. Yeah. So we can take a lot of things out of our, the consciousness, the collective consciousness, if we just stop consciously thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's just some things to think about while you are <laughs> meditating. Because seriously, and I say that because sometimes when I meditate, it really is for God to give me what my what my goal, what my purpose is for this time. I don't think we have just one purpose. Is we have this for such a time as this. And there may be something that comes up in my spirit and now like, okay, run with that. Like the bless. Tell everybody they bless. Just believe it. Just be blessed. Just tell everybody. And then eventually everybody will start believing it. Yeah. You know? It's like the meditation. People are like, well, breathing ain't going to help no stress. Well, what if it does? So let's just breathe and say, breathing and keep my stress down. Mm -hmm. Meditating will help um, keep my stress down. Let's keep saying it and then let's do it and let's believe it and we'll see it and it works. And it's like, now we didn't get into the consciousness and everybody know we can take care of the diseases and sickness with breathing and meditation. Wow. <laughs> we have five minutes. Carmen, I have enjoyed talking with you. I hope everybody has enjoyed. I hope you got something out of it. If you weren't meditating, please start meditating. If you need help with your meditation practice, you can contact Carmen now. Oh. Uh, you can visit my website, www.selfhealingmeditationstudio.org, or you can visit me on Facebook on Self Healing Meditation Studio. Self Healing Meditation Studio. Yes. We will put that in the link. And everybody, thank you, Carmen, again. Listen, y'all, meditation practice. We, we didn't talk about money, we talked about mindset, we didn't talk about meditation. If you didn't have any goals for 2021, those need those are good three good goals to start saving more money, <laughs> protecting your money, growing more money, all of that stuff. But getting your money right, yeah. getting your mindset about everything right, just changing into something that is going to serve you, and then meditating because once you have that. You, you're, when you you can't even change your mindset really without proper meditation. Oh, yes. Meditation brings manifestation. Yes, yes. So all of that, all three of these things, these are three things for January 2021 to help you get through the whole year and then some because your meditation practice is not going to stop. Mm -mm. Once you start it, you will complete it. You will keep doing it. It'll be like second nature. It'll be subconsciously, you'll be doing it just like you breathe it, but you'll be taking a little bit more time and you'll make sure you learn how to calm yourself. And oh my gosh, I'm just excited about what's going to happen. I really am. I'm so glad to have met you now. And I see the chakras. We are going to have to do a show about chakras. Oh, definitely. Because let me tell you, oh my goodness, lining up them chakras energy yes the energy oh and then let me just say everybody that's out there that love god you can love god and believe that your energy needs to be cleared all at the same time you can believe in both it's okay for those people that said you couldn't they lied to you yes. i'm just saying you and can believe both <laughs> and you know um if you are interested i definitely have a, a meditation I guess podcast where I just have all guided meditations if you want to just have take five minutes and just relax and it's self-healing meditation studio um, on Castbox. Okay, everybody I'll go. We'll put that information in there. Thank you so much. We have to go now. This podcast was brought to you by Tosin's Publishing. Hey, remember I didn't say journaling, but we know we need to be journaling too. And go get the I Am Blessed journal on um, amazon.com or you can go to um, www.tolsonbooks.com to get the, um, the journal. And until next week, be blessed.